Looking out into the vastness of the Craftyverse, we can see over 200 billion stars in the Milky Way alone. The Milky Way galaxy is our celestial stomping grounds. Beyond that, we can see over 100 billion more galaxies, all racing away from us at the speed of light, which is pretty fast. Let's put it this way, there's a lot of space out there. And still, with all this room, you can get stuck living next to some pretty shy neighbors. Welcome to the Craftyverse. Today, we will be building a diorama of some neighbors you'd never want to get stuck living next to. We're going to construct a house, fence, yard, and even a kiddie pool. We'll also do some weathering techniques and of course create the neighbors themselves. So if this sounds good to you, then let's get our craft on. Okay, here's a really rough sketch of what I'm trying to accomplish today. I'm going to be making two separate dioramas that are going to be a juxtaposition between two neighbors in the Craftyverse. One is real fancy pants and the other is uh, the worst neighbors you could ever imagine. I'm in Photoshop and I'm outlining the main shapes of these buildings and double checking my measurements. And what this is going to do is allow my laser cutter to be able to cut out these complex shapes. Let's cut. Hello everybody, this is Tinu's daddy. I'm on dialogue probation now because Tinu claims that I've been hijacking his videos and I'm only allowed to talk about craft related subjects, so uh, I apologize for boring y'all in advance. Okay, we're already off to a shaky start. What did you expect? No, I'm not sure. But if you look up at the screen, I'm gluing together this cardstock that I cut out with my laser cutter. And these door frames and window frames are made from a basewood plywood. Look at you, you're like a mini carpenter now. Right, oh big guy, that's so I can get the measurements for the balcony supports. See, I know crafts. Hmm. This next step is a very technical process for giving the wood some wear and tear. Technical. Do people actually watch you rub pieces of wood on the ground? Some, but there's a little more to it than that. We building stuff, we craft and... Do I really have to read from this script? Yes, we talked about this. Fine. Tinu is using bal balsa wood? Balsa wood. Balsa wood and sticky, sticky tack. Tacky glue. Sticky glue. Uh. To make some wooden pieces that no one cares about. I'm unsubscribing to this channel. I don't think you know how to subscribe in the first place. Well, I'm gonna Google it. I don't think you know how to do that either. I've cut out a foam base and I'm using a combination of great stuff and hot glue to sandwich the pieces of foam together. Boy, this looks haphazard at best. Yeah, you know, but it works. And once it was dried, I decided to cut the dimensions down a little. And this is corrugated cardboard that I spray painted. They're gonna have a tin roof. Yeah, you know people say it's really soothing to like hear rain on a tin roof, but I grew up in a house with a tin roof and at night I would lay listening to the rain and it sounded like all my fears and my inner demons are coming for me. This is some plastic packaging, I think from tomatoes. Anyway, I'm going to make a small kiddie pool out of this. This is an old printer cartridge and I'm going to attach some greeblies or just little pieces of plastic to make it look more machine like. I want there to be a sci-fi element.
bit of an over problem? One of many. I like things to be strong. Go figure. Here we go with the weird little people. Yep, that's how I like to roll. Okay, from the script. Uh, these bodies are made out of epoxy sculpt and braided wire. Hey, that was pretty good. My god, it looks like these heads you're sculpting are all based off of your mama's side of the family. Daddy. Hey, if it stings a little, that means it's true. These are some little hair curlers that I made out of costly. Now, you can't tell me that that's not the spitting image of your Aunt Mary bit. I feel to see it. Hey, people see what they want to see. That's exactly what I was thinking. So I made her a robe, and now I'm adding some uh, fuzzies to the robe. Fuzzies. Why does he have a wire sticking out of his foot? This wire is going to go directly into the diorama itself, and it's going to hold a figure there really firmly. Oh, check this out. This is one of my favorite parts. I'm applying mineral spirits and then I let it dry for just a few minutes and then I put like a really thick coat of acrylic paint on top. You can see it doesn't really want to stick that well. Then you let it dry like 20 minutes and voila. I'm gonna be frankly honest, this looks terrible. Well, it's gonna be weathered wood and I'm in the middle of the process. You have to see it as a whole. Okay, I'm starting to get it. This looks like Mr. Randy's house. That man is allergic to paintbrushes. Don't you ever say anything nice about anyone? Not on purpose. Flying V. This is the beautiful Gibson Flying V. And I need one in this diorama. Let's make one. God, I swear I knew these people. Mm, doubt it. Anyway, I'm doing a dry brush of titanium white. I like doing this over black and then adding thin washes of paint on top of it. Most of the paint that I'm using is from Vejeyo. They're thin washes. Okay, if we were watching the TV show Cops, this would be the guy they're gonna arrest first. Guitar player? Big Papa? Whoa, demon baby. Yep, demon baby. Victoria, mom's. And mom's mole. Can you go back to the shot of the whole family? This one? Yes. Okay, stop. Stop it. Now riddle me this. Why is it always the people who should leave their clothes on are the ones who take all their clothes off? It's like the nudist colony horror show. Life is full of mysteries, but I'll tell you what, the reference photo that I used to build that guy is from a vacation photo. Don't you dare. <laughs> you know, if memory serves, it was you that convinced me that the Speedo was the height of fashion. And it is, and that was a thoroughly enjoyable vacation for me. Right. I'm coating the figures with a black tinted UV resin. Okay, I'll admit that one silver lining to the Speedo was that it cleared out the hotel pool in seconds. We had it all to ourselves. And speaking of pools, I did a deep resin pour into the kiddie pool. I'm using Deluxe Glue and Glaze to attach some blueberry packaging for the windows. 
I did the same weathering treatment on these window dividers that I did on the frames. I made these out of toothpicks. Was that also the same vacation to Disney World where you showed me how to do the dance moves to YMCA? One and the same. Yeah, hotel management was not thrilled with that. This fence didn't have enough damage on it for this family, so uh, I took some steps. Adding a little bit of green mold. And some bamboo skewers and PVA glue to make the support posts for the fence. You know, I don't think I'm ever going back to Disneyland again. Cause it a speedo? No, it's because I'll go broke. All roads lead to the gift shop over there. Their slogan should be Disneyland. Close your mouth and open your wallet. <laughs> That's a pretty accurate assessment. I added some toothpicks to the bottom of the building and then sunk them into the foam along with some PVA glue. Oh god, is this more footage from Disney World? No, it's just from the nearby creek. I went and collected some sand so that I can make a sandy yard. You know what's the other thing that bummed me out about Disneyland? Now your audience may not know this, but I'm a big Tinkerbell fan. Yeah, it's always been an acute source of embarrassment for me. Whatever. Anyway, I go to get my picture taken with Tinkerbell, and uh, in the cartoon she looks like she's like 23, but the lady in the costume looked like she was like 83. A more accurate name would have been Wrinkle Bell. How long have you been waiting to say that? Years. I've been painting on some rust effects. This is sort of a sci-fi crafty verse machine of some sort. Are you pulling a string through some glue? Yep, it allows me to make things like extension cords or cables and it takes away the fuzz of the hemp rope. Oh, it's a train track. No, it's a mold. I've got some cheesecloth in it and I put some plaster of Paris with a little bit of paint. And you can see it's going to be a sidewalk with the little dividers. Now that it's dry, this is the fun part. I get to crack it. The cheesecloth was added to this to stop the sidewalk from falling apart as it's being cracked. Okay, I'm cutting out a little room for the sidewalk. If you were smart, you would have did that before you put all that sand. Yeah, well, crafting is a learning process. I'm constantly figuring stuff out. That's kind of the whole deal. You experiment, play around with stuff, follow your instincts. That's, uh, that's the fun of it. What, you didn't add enough resin to fill the pool? No, I'm adding some UV resin on top of the deep pour resin so that I can create some uh, ripples on the surface. And I think it came out good enough. It looks like water. Now, as I add in the final details, I'd like to thank all my Patreons, who are the coolest people that I know. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. If you're not a Patreon, consider joining. I do some behind the scenes stuff, ask for advice, and uh, yeah, fun stuff. Also, I'd like to thank the cool people who bought stuff from my wish list. How super sweet is that? You guys rock. Thank you. Now hold up, I have a two part question. Oh boy. Number one. At the beginning of this video, as you said that you were making two dioramas. The sister diorama is going to be in a separate video. No. Oh. And number two, how did I score on my verbal probation? I give that a C minus. What? Well, you did sidetrack us a bit. Again. I think your grading curve is overly harsh.